Hi guys, welcome back to another virtual round table of MHI. Today I'm joined as always by my brother Carlos, and today we have the pleasure of having Brian Richards, who is a world-renowned expert in biohacking, sauna therapy, light therapy science, and electric magnetic fields. In 2018, Brian transformed his health by creating his own incandescent electric light bath. In 2013, he founded Sauna Space and his company based out of Missouri handcrafts innovative saunas and targeted therapy devices that harness nature's most potent spectrum for light and heat therapy. We've had hundreds of customers that have transformed their lives with the sauna space experience, starting with us. So without further ado, Thank you. Brian, pleasure. Thank you for coming on board and uh, for giving our audience and ourselves a little bit about a little bit of your attention and to actually discuss the benefits of this healing therapy. Yeah. So what we do at sauna space is light and heat therapy stacked together. So let's first talk about like, why is light so important? I got a cool slide here. I can show you. Let's see if you can, you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so light therapy is defined as the use of red, and near infrared light to heal damaged tissue and reoptimize function of healthy tissue. So red light we can see with our eyes, and near infrared light we just is outside the visible light spectrum. We can't see it with our eyes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you uh, later how important that is in terms of the sun spectrum. It's the majority of the sun spectrum. Either way, whether you're using red or near infrared, uh, that's what it does. It does it in every cell of the body because every cell of the body has what are called mitochondria and the mitochondria are not just the energy producers of the cell. They have this really important healing, regenerative, correcting function on keeping the cell super healthy. What you see in this chart are some of the direct effects. So you see the near infrared light comes from the sun. It's absorbed by a light receptor protein on the mitochondria, and it results in all of these cellular effects here in the middle square, like growth factors, inflammation reduction, anti-aging effects, um, uh, regenerative effects. And then what you see is when you do that in the cells and the tissues, you get all of these type of tissular and cellular effects at the right. You get reduction in inflammation, pain relief, reduction in edema, reduction in neurologic pain and recovery from TBI, wound healing, tissue repair, helping save cells that are gonna die. We're gonna fix them and repair them. This is all like this built-in healing system that all of us have because we're beings of light more than uh you know at, at the end of the day the the ultimate new nurt uh, excuse me the ultimate nutrient we have available to us is not what we eat it's light hmm. uh, uh the 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 sun uh, provides all of this this is the light of nature so so like i think it's important to understand what are we talking about what does this light look like um in terms of uh, spectrum and maybe how does it differ from a lot of the modern lighting we have nowadays so people can understand well what is natural light and what is artificial light matrix light junk light so i have another slide here i can show you um, right so let me see if i can geek out for a second because uh yeah yeah I understand it's good so usually spectrum of light starts with uvb which is like i don't know three to four hundred uh nanometers then you have UVA, which those two are the ones that damage the skin, cause DNA damage, can lead to cancer, et cetera. Then yeah. you have red light therapy, which starts somewhere, I guess, in 600. You'll get into those numbers. 600 to like 750. And then near infrared light, which is 750 to like 14 or 1500. And that's usually where we get the nourishment you're talking about, right? Yeah, you have it right. And you can see it actually in this next chart that I just pulled up. This is the spectrum of the sun. So you get all of these wavelengths under this curve. What we've highlighted in orange here is, is this near infrared band that's just outside of the red light. So it's just outside of the visible spectrum. You might be using your pointer to see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So all of this is all of these wavelengths we get from the sun at the same time. Okay. And this is the power distribution. So we get some we get some ultraviolet light, like you mentioned, and a lot of visible light. 
uh, some so we get some red light but the majority of the area under this curve is what's highlighted in orange here and we call that near infrared so that's it's about 700 to 1500 nanometers okay. uh, it, it turns out that in terms of power we absorb from the sun 70 percent of the power we absorb is near infrared so our oh. experience with the sun you know we get a little bit ultraviolet and you you said it right it's damaging to us because it causes dna mutation and even blue light which is not ionizing has been shown to uh, cause free radical production in the body that's why people wear blue light blockers blue light is called high energy visible light so it's just it's right next to ultraviolet light and so ultraviolet and blue light are both kind of damaging to us it's because they're host so they're so high energy but once we get over to red and near infrared we get into this magical band of healing which was which produces these effects I mentioned before with the previous graph. And, and again, our experience with natural light is this, it's all of these wavelengths, but it's not just, and it's not just one wavelength. It's all these wavelengths in this natural progression of powers that we see here in this graph. So it's a little bit of red and, a, and, and a lot of near infrared. And then there's also a little bit of mid infrared and far infrared, but the majority of our experience with sunlight and the only light we have in nature that we've we've ever had up until the advent of electricity is um and fire i suppose is is the sun and the sun is mostly a near infrared experience so that's kind of where all the magic is happening yes most people are familiar with all of this um more as red light therapy but it's really near infrared light therapy that is the mainstay of what we experience in nature. And the two things, the two wavelengths bands are doing the same thing. As I mentioned before, red and near infrared have the same effect on the mitochondria. But there is a difference in how our body, uh, how our body gets it because we're getting just a little bit of red and we're getting mostly near infrared. And the question is, why is that? If, if as you can see here, there's red lights right here, 600 to 700 nanometers. There's a fair amount of red there. Why is it that we absorb so much more near infrared than red? Why is our experience mostly near infrared? That has to do with what's called the water absorption spectrum. So, so wait, can we move on to that real fast, Brian. Yeah. I guess by saying that, how much your volume is really low, Miguel. How much uh, percentage do you say of the? It's still very low. How much percentage of the sun that you say is um, near infrared light? So spectrally on this graph, it's 43%, but because near infrared light penetrates much deeper into the body than red light and any other wavelength really, which is, I'm going to show you why in a second, it turns out that of all the power we absorb, if we measure like all the power in Watts that we absorb from the sun, over 70% is near infrared. Yeah. Can't hear you, Miguel. We cannot hear you. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the best time to get this near infrared light would be the first hour at uh, dawn and the last hour of the day. That's where you're really getting all the red without the UVA and UVB. If you wanted to get it naturally. Yeah, absolutely. And I can show you that actually right here. So in the very in the morning when the sun rises, you have the maximum amount of red near infrared. But then the blue light and the ultraviolet light increase. And so at midday, by midday here, when the sun is above us, that's when we're getting the maximum amount of the damaging wavelengths. Yeah. Right. And then it kind of ta tails off toward the end of the day where at sunset, there's no more blue light. It's only red and near infrared. And it's mostly near infrared. So yeah, the best times, uh, and actually the research indicates that the best time to get um sunlight like near infrared light from the sun is in the morning right. the the we're seeing a, a lot of interesting studies and in the morning light actually being more beneficial than the evening light but this this is why our ancestors engaged in um in in watching the sunrise every day and how we can actually uh benefit most from the sun by first starting out by getting morning light before we get midday because one of the benefits of near infrared light is it protects us from the damage of ultraviolet light, which you can also get with man-made near infrared light sources. You have a photoprotective effect that 
you get from from near infrared near infrared is the ultimate nutrient in nature if we're talking about light it's all about near infrared yeah so question i mean my brother and i as you can see i just turned it on i usually have it pointing down on my body what are the benefits of constantly getting this near infrared light therapy we, we have a show your mount so people can see because that's the one that we have Brian. yeah you can see right yeah, here guys, we have that same exact mount on our uh stand-up desk where we're constantly getting this light maybe i don't know if i'm jumping off subject but you can talk about it now or later uh what are the benefits of constantly getting this light well it's it's all the uh if the light's directed on us it's all those benefits of uh, before it's there's other benefits as well it increases your cellular melatonin production the body is number one antioxidant so we're refilling our antioxidant reserves it also has a calming effect on the nervous system so a lot of us are living lives where we're stressed out a lot and we're working at the computer a lot. So uh, anything we can do to to bat, to bring balance to our nervous system is beneficial and absolutely near for light has that effect on, on the brain and on the nervous system. But even beyond that, why would I want to use it all day long next to the computer? This light has two other really interesting effects that are unique to our technology and they are are these two. They, the this light, uh, our firelight spectrum here, cancels out blue light, right, and flickering light effects from all these LED lights that we have nowadays. All the screens, all the overhead lighting, it's all LED based. So it's a lot of blue light that flickers, and these are two sort. These are two things that stress out our nervous system. So when I have this here, it's creating this like healthy light bubble around me, and it's helping me to beat the technology fatigue that we all feel you know when we work long hours at the computer you know what's really interesting what's really interesting and I, I just i need to comment on that what's really interesting about like what we do and you know specifically what you said about the effects of what you feel with this light so a lot of people will only go with things that they'll actually feel which is a, a huge mistake right because there are supplements that you'll take that you shouldn't be feeling like nobody feels anything from vitamin D supplementation, but it's super important, right? So my experience from putting this light, I can totally, totally, and you know, my brother and I work long hours in front of a computer and I can totally feel the difference of when I have the light on versus when I don't have the light on. I call it my happy light. Because while I have it on, I feel the effects on my brain and on my stress levels. It's a much more soothing sort of environment when I have it on. I always like to say, hey, it's like working at the beach every day, right? It just puts you in a different mood. And I'm telling you, because, you know, we travel a lot as well. And when mm -hmm. I travel and I'm working in front of the computer and I don't have the light, I can totally feel it. Or sometimes, because I didn't know how long I should have it on. So sometimes I'll turn it off. And I'll go hours without it. And I'll be like, what's missing? Something's wrong. And I'll be like, oh, my light. And I'll yeah. turn it on. And it changes the experience completely. So anybody watching and listening to this, if you're someone that, you know, hey, I only want to purchase things or I only want to go with things that you feel. I mean, aside from everything what, of Brian, what Brian just said in terms of the cellular effects of, of the light, of red light and, and specifically infrared, just the mood that it puts you in when you have it, especially at work, is 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 one hundred percent noticeable. Well, I yes. guess what he's the other reasons I would say are beneficial, and I guess that's why it has that happy, calming effect. Uh, just to reiterate, reiterate, and what you just said about um, the flickering, so people don't really know what that is. Our computer or our blue, the, our electric screens are basically flickering about 120 times per second. It's unperceivable by the eye. So that's already a stress. The blue light in itself is messing up our circadian rhythm, which is already a stressor. And yep. when you're like us running a business, dealing with monkey wrenches throwing at us all the time, we're already sort of in that sympathetic fight or flight response. So yeah. any, added, any other added stressor, yeah. we feel, right? And the other point is that what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, that melatonin, I think it's like 95% of it is made subcellular inside, subcellularly inside the cell, while mm -hmm. only like 5% is made in the pineal gland. 
So all that light that we're intaking, which is serotonin that we're building up at night, it converts into melatonin inside the body. Hence why people, when they go to the beach that night, usually they sleep like a rock because we're building up all this melatonin in our body. Is that accurate or? Yeah, th that's accurate. It's just important to note that the, the way the cell makes cellular melatonin is with near infrared light. It doesn't do it on its own. So you get the near infrared light and you have these you fill up your pools of melatonin in your cells and then it's has an amazing benefit for sleep as you mentioned but melatonin is the body's number one antioxidant so it also has a really important yep. like antioxidative effect on the cell that's keeping the cell nice and healthy well, right good point didn't consider it. yeah melatonin is so the so by by, do, by doing the red light i don't need to take melatonin because there's so many people that take melatonin unnecessarily <laughs> 